Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. It's really remarkable that, you know, he can, he can do these things that we as humans can't do for each other. Dogs are said to be man's best friend. We know that police have canines who help solve crimes. In Cass County, a dog is also helping crime victims prepare to testify. A therapy dog named Hilo joined the state's attorney's office about three months ago. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop shares how Hilo helps comfort victims and county employees involved with cases. Hilo. Up. Meet four-year-old Hilo. He comes to the Cass County State's Attorney's Office two days a week. Kihilo is a therapy dog and a facility dog. He's in the office to, you know, we deal with yucky stuff. This rescue dog comforts victims along with Brenda's co-workers. I love having Hilo here. I mean, Hilo, I wish was here all the time. Brenda admits it has taken a while to get her office on board with the idea of having a dog work with them. But eventually, her boss allowed her to test it out. For those people who come unwillingly into the system, somebody who's the victim of a crime, this is a scary thing. They don't understand how the system works. Burdick says although they were able to still do their job fine before, Hilo's intuition adds an extra layer of comfort to victims. We're not using Hilo in the courtroom at this point in time, but we are using Hilo in the office. It brings um, to some victims uh, in appropriate circumstances that comfort level where they feel freer to talk. Brenda says in the three months Hilo has been working with her, she's had dozens of stories of where a Hilo has opened victims up or changed their thinking about themselves. She was 24 and she thought life wasn't worth living. And Hilo looked at her and looked at me and looked back at her and went and sat and cried and sat in her. He was so like, he was like, yes, you're worthy. You can't pay for that kind of therapy. Brenda says Hilo has been an asset and helps her co-workers decompress when dealing with the tough details in their day. Sexual assault or rape, they're going to take all that data in as they're typing it in. You don't just wash that off. It doesn't just go out. It sticks somewhere in you because there's another human that was harmed. Having Hilo a part of the state's attorney's office is not costing the county anything, but they say it's aiding them in seeking justice. The goal in the criminal justice system is to uncover the truth. The things he's already done for victims can make me weep. In Fargo, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. Cass County may be the only state's attorney's office in North Dakota to have a therapy dog. Numerous other states have dogs working in the state's attorney offices. Some are even specially trained to be in courtrooms. Pretty quiet out there today. We saw some sunshine and temps were near 80 degrees. Let's head over to Hutch Johnson for a first look at what's going on. Hutch? Heading into our evening, Andrea, looks like we are quiet. The radar showing a little activity southern Manitoba and western and central South Dakota. But for tonight, we still are drying out. Flood warning remains in effect for Dickey County. That area inundated with rain. Here's a picture that was shared and uploaded on ValleyNewsLive.com by staff of seven inches measured in a flat bottomed cylindrical barrel. That's a lot of rain. You can see southeast North Dakota, the Devil's Lake Basin, much of central and southern Minnesota, the hot spots for rainfall over the last two days. Elliott reporting uh, 6.8 inches, Pelican Rapids 2.79. So we get a chance to dry out this evening, just a few clouds, low 70s. And with clearing skies tonight, Andrea, maybe a chance to see the peak of the Perseid meteor showers, which mm -hmm. is going on the next couple of nights. Right. Look up to the sky. I will. Thank right, you, Hutch. You bet. Human trafficking charges were filed yesterday in Cass County, and today we're learning more information about the man being charged. He's been on the radar of federal authorities for some time now. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric has been digging into Eric Watson's past. Bradford, what have you found? Send this report to U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. That's the last line of this police report, detailing the charges against Eric Dante Watson. While Immigration and Customs Enforcement was tight-lipped, they did confirm their involvement. This past January, Fargo police say they met with an 18-year-old girl who talks about how she agreed to come to Fargo with Watson. But once here, their relationship changed. She says Watson forced her to have sex with other men for money. That mugshot is from several years ago when Watson was arrested and convicted on drug charges in Minnesota. Here's his rap sheet from Minnesota. It's four pages long, as you can see. Back here in North Dakota, Watson was the subject of a drug investigation by the Metro Street Crimes Unit along with Homeland Security and the ATF.
So why is this important to you? Because there are two active warrants out there for Eric Dante Watson's arrest, and he's not yet been found. All right, thank you so much, Bradford. We have more information from Immigration and Customs Enforcement online. Just click on this story at valleynewslive.com. Police are still looking for a 17-year-old Bemidji, Minnesota girl who may be in the Crookston or Grand Forks areas. Malaya Hendricks has black hair and brown eyes. She stands 5 feet 1 inches tall and weighs about 222 pounds. She has a tattoo on her right forearm, may wear glasses, and may go by the nickname Mel. Authorities say she may be in the company of another girl. If you have any information, you're asked to contact police. The Drug Enforcement Administration is keeping all marijuana illegal. Today, the DEA says marijuana has no currently accepted medical use and has a high potential for abuse. That means it will stay in the same category as heroin and cocaine, at least for now. Today's announcement keeps states that allow marijuana for recreational or medical use in defiance of federal law. Here in North Dakota, voters will be deciding a plan to allow medical marijuana in the state. The Secretary of State has announced the North Dakota Compassionate Care Act will appear on the November 8th ballot. If approved, it would allow people suffering from certain medical conditions to use marijuana with their doctor's approval. A series of recent court decisions could change rules on how Americans will be casting votes this November in North Dakota. A federal judge blocked North Dakota's voter ID laws, saying it infringed on the rights of Native Americans. The law, which was blocked, would have tightened ID requirements, according to the National Congress of American Indians. Pratt Wiley with the Democratic National Committee says the law would have amounted to having people pay to vote. The cost of obtaining a photo ID is disproportionately harder on the Native American community, especially in North Dakota, than it is as the population as a whole. North Dakota Secretary of State Al Jager says the state will follow the federal judge's order. In a recent interview, he indicated he'd like to tackle the issue again during the next legislative session. West Fargo has a new senior housing development and it's filling up fast. There are only five apartments left for rent and it's only been open for a month. The new development is called Dakota Commons and it's near the Osgood Golf Course. It's made up of 30 two-bedroom apartments, all designated for people ages 55 and older. The apartment rents range from $462 to $750 a month, depending on income and family size. Grand Forks police are joining the nationwide trend to take the danger out of Craigslist and other online transactions. They have implemented a simple idea in their parking lot to keep everyone safe during transactions. For instance, buying a used item with cash. Signs now show two parking spots labeled Safe Trade Zone. People who don't know each other can meet right next to the police department to conduct their business. Uh, we don't have officers standing by mm -hmm. all the time, but this should be a relatively, uh, hopefully a relatively safe place where people can come in and make their purchase in exchange. Because both parties know they're also on video surveillance when this is happening. That is correct, yep. Fargo police have also implemented a safe trade zone. It's located at a police substation at 1230 25th Street South. And remember to like Valley News Live on Facebook. You can follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. If you like the University of North Dakota and like to shop, have we got a deal or two for you? That's later on Valley News Live at 6. Well, if you got up and looked out your window, it looked like a pretty soggy day ahead of us across the valley, but things are clearing up. Temperature of 80 and some quieter weather in your forecast details are coming up right after this.